this is the aftermarket report and update with Vegas and Jim. Today is November the 18th, 2018, and I want to hand this right over to Vegas. Hi, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us. And today we're going to review here, we're going to re review AEZS, Ruby, RGSC, NE. And then I have a special guest, Patrick, our OTC mentor. We're going to talk with him uh, today as well. So why don't we first start with A-E-Z-S. I'm actually pronouncing it properly for Jim today. Because um, as Canadians, we say Z. So um, Jim, let's talk about this beautiful chart and tell us what you see here on A-E-Z-S. This is Eterna Zenteris. Yeah, she's a beauty. She's definitely fighting up there to be at a year high. Uh, Friday, we really had a wonderful day on AEZS, and we called it out, I think, uh, previous before the breakout even happened. And we run up to right where we said it was going to, right up here around 292. So this is on the year's chart. This thing on the year's high had a 325 high. So what we want to see, we want to see this week get up there to around 307. To around 325 I'd like to see a healthy pullback and when I mean healthy I don't mean a big one I mean just kind of a let's pull this down to a different time frame here like a 20 day and get some kind of idea see how this beautiful 10 day run on this stock right now and we had a little bit pullback after hours so let's see if we can get this thing right down to about 279 270 in that channel right there and start to rebound up to that three dollar range set 303 and then break on up. So this is going to be A E Z S, and we definitely got it on watch. And okay, our next one is H E A R. Here, you guys know that this company actually um, manufactures products for hearing, and uh, this company is ready for another move. And Jim's actually got that on watch. And Jim, what are your thoughts for, I believe we're looking for a swing trade on this one. Well, I'm definitely thinking we're at a bargain right now. We've got the Christmas play going on. These are for gamers that uh, like to play games, they headsets. They're probably some of the best ones made out there right now for gamers in a way. They're very, sales have been just immaculate on this, on this stock. So let's go up to the one year chart. Let's look at it real fast here. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. H-E-A-R. See, we've had a wonderful run. I mean, this has been running for almost a, had a good four or five month run. Now it's pulled back. Pulled back to under the 200 SMA, which was right around 1547. So we hit a solid support right down there, right around 1364, 60, 1370. So I'm gonna get. I'm gonna jump in this Monday for a flip. I'm gonna to try to get in this under 15 if I can, around 1475, 73. If I can get in around there, I'm gonna be a happy camper, and I'm gonna run it back up to resistance, which was an old support, which would be right around 1678, 16, 17 bucks, somewhere around there. And then if it takes off and picks up momentum. I'll run it up to the 50 and then to maybe the 100 SMA. This is going to be here. So I'm definitely going to be flipping this Monday morning. Okay. Well, that sounds like a good idea. Yep. And uh, one stock that I've really been watching a lot and we've traded uh, even on uh, day trades, uh, but still looks like a solid continuation. I mean, this stock just doesn't stop is RUBI. So Rubicon Project, just to give people a quick overview on the stock, I mean, this company was founded in 2007. So this is a very young company. And, um, you know, they're involved in uh, modeling advertising. And what they do is they work with top brands around the globe to reach more than a billion customers. They obviously are headquartered in Los Angeles, California. They automate advertising platforms. So they have a really cool, cool uh, system. And obviously, uh, it looks like it's reflecting in the performance of the company. And uh, the, the chart is so bullish. I mean, this is just making higher highs every single day. And Jim? 
yeah. do you see there? Well, I'm pulling up year's chart. We had a year high Friday with 489, pulled back and closed at 476. Now, we've had something happen here in the last seven, eight days to really make this stock run. We had a nice little breakout right back here on uh, oh, 11 8. So something happened back there in the news. I want to take a real fast look at it here. Looks like it was an upgrade. Sales, so that's what it was, sales growth. Sales growth exceeded 20%. So it was up on sales, had a nice little bounce, kind of starting to kind of kind of like turn into a mountaintop a little bit where it kind of flattens out a little and consolidate. So we've had Ruby on our watch list for a good couple of months. And it's been a nice little up and down. I'm gonna look at the uh, look at the 20-day chart real fast. So we know that earnings have been good on it. So that's a good positive thing right there. We've had a pretty nice little two-week run on this thing. I think, like I said, it's kind of call it consolidate this week, and then continue for another breakout. So let's see it pull back, maybe to support level right around 470, which it's at 476 right now. Maybe around 450, 460 somewhere and get back in it. And this is going to be Ruby. Okay. Next one. RGSE. I, like I definitely like the chart on it. And we're at a 52 week high on it. So I guess tomorrow we'll know exactly what it wants to do. Exactly. Yeah. So the next one we're going to talk about is, uh, and we talked about this one last week too, is uh, RGSE, Real Good Solar Energy. And you guys know that they make the solar shingles, and they're quite dominant. Um, they're doing really well, especially with uh, home builders that are now making it kind of standard when they build new homes. Um, so there is some really um, good continuation happening here on this chart. I mean, the stock is just, um, you know, still very cheap, actually, for, the, for what the company is worth. Uh, but it did have nice volume surge on Friday. It also had a parabolic rise. Um, so I, um, you know, don't, ex don't, you know, worry if there's a bit of a pullback, but it also had a really nice pocket pivot on the stock. And I really like that, um, where it was higher than any other volume for within the 10 days, uh, trading period. So I do like that the chart to me is bullish and I'm looking for it to continue, uh, this week. And I do have a position on this particular stock. And Jim, what are your thoughts on that particular chart? Well, the, the stock in the chart, the stock would be a great long swing trade for me. You know, if I was wanting to go ahead and buy some of it, I'd probably hold it for all, maybe all winter long. I'd, another thing is we just broke out of what we tried to break out of before, which was right, out, right around 50 cents. It was a real hard resistance. I'm seeing that on the yearly chart. We also have a little, the 50 SMA starting to move up over the 100, which, you know, it's already kind of a late call already from the breakout at 38 cents. So we broke out past that 50, which was a really good standing uh, hard resistance. I think we're going to go ahead and continue on up, run this up to about 72 long. That's where the one, uh, 200 SMA is on the yearly chart. Let me pull it back just one more time here. Yeah, I'd like this for a long swing. If I was going to get in it, I'd like to get in on a pullback. If I could get in around 50 cents or maybe a little less, right around 47, that would be a treat. So let's keep RGSE on watch. It's a solar stock. I think it's, it's on a rebound. It's definitely picked up some. I'd like to see it pull back for an entry. Okay. Yep. Well, I just want to add one last thing. You know, this that, this is a good stock for you guys to watch too uh, over the next, uh, especially into 2019. I think the price on this stock will probably see some some surges throughout the year. And oh, the yeah. reason why is also because in California, they have this uh, solar movement of 2020 where it's going to be mandatory that home builders actually have homes with solar roofing 
So it's now not going to be an option where if you want it, you can have it. It's mandatory. So this is like one of the first states that's making solar roofing mandatory. So that means that, you know, there's going to be more demand for the product. So I can see that next year, this company should have increased revenue because obviously, you know, to build a, a house takes time. And uh, obviously, they're going to have to start placing the orders for those solar panels in 2019 for delivery in 2020. So I think we'll have to keep a watch on this one all of next year. Yeah. And I, I do believe they're going to be in com competitive. Uh, they're going to be competing with Tesla, too. On, on, yes. On their, I in their market. did read that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm, I'm all for this stock. I think it's really cheap right now. And I'll probably pick some up and even have some for a swing myself when I get in at oh. my right entry. That's good. All okay. right. So last one here for the markets that I want to talk about is uh, Noble Corporation. And uh, that one's had a bit of drama on the stock. And uh, this company here has had a bit of a pullback here. So uh, they also had their earnings. They had some losses. Um they did come up with a quarterly loss of 43 cents per share for and the estimates were 47 so um they did have some loss there was they you know they're obviously in the oil and gas drilling industry so Jim you talk about that chart cuz that chart I recall looking at this at one time it was in the $6 range Yeah we were playing this up there in that $6 range I even had a, a channel drawn up I mean, it was on a good 6 7 month run from 339 all the way up to about 744 and then all of a sudden in the past month and a half we just had drama it just sold off and just you know just went ugly and I'm look I'm showing this by the year's chart you can see that little channel that we played back here when it was right around in this area so she's pulled way back and now she's come back in the last three or four days and kind of stood up a little bit so we, we hit a resistance, we hit an old support level, which was right around 440, about 445, 440, somewhere in there. And that was a pretty good little pivot point on this yearly chart. Once it breaks past that 445, it can go ahead and start bouncing up to the next level of resistance, which would be around 464, 463, somewhere around there. So we'll put little, maybe 470 long. So let's keep NE on watch. I, this is new to me. I'm gonna, well, it's not new to me because I was playing it when it was going on a good run. But I'm going to try to figure out what this hard sell-off was all about. Keep it on watch, though. NE. Okay. And now I actually want to introduce Patrick because, as you guys know, I've talked about in previous videos. I've talked about the OTC mentorship classes, coaching classes, because it is really about learning together and it's uh you know helping people understand the otc market everyone has you know a lot of people have a bad impression of the otc market which is so not the case uh depending on obviously picking quality quality picks and making sure you do the due diligence on um you know obviously we have a checklist that we follow and thank you to patrick for really helping uh put this uh course together and it's going to be ongoing uh never a repeat of previous sessions, just a continuation. And that's why we call it the coaching classes, because really it is to help us become better and better in the OTC market. So Patrick, I'm going to turn it over to you to talk to us about OTC stocks.
Vegas, it's not working. Oh, it's not working? No. Well, he's talking. I hear, I see him talking yeah, on it's, YouTube it's, it's live. Not, it's not working. Okay. Well, when he's done Vegas, it's not working. I'll tell him oh, to it's save not working. Smile. No. Okay. Well, he's talking. I hear, I see him talking. I'll tell him to save it. Oh, I see what happened. Okay. okay, are we good now? Okay. Yeah, we hear well, you now. <laughs> all right, here we go. Let's try again. Okay. Okay. All, all right. So, um, you know, when it comes to OTC markets and OTC trading, a lot of people uh, have a lot of concerns with regards to it being a pump and dump and all these different things. And I appreciate that 100%. And um, I'm so excited to be part of the team here because... Um, there's a world of opportunity in the OTC and a lot of really interesting private companies using this market to merge into being publicly traded. The thing about these stocks is that they are a debt vehicle. And given that they're a debt vehicle, some of that debt can be quite toxic. So I thought I would show you how I use my step system on a user request, RxMD, and then maybe look at something that could be interesting uh, moving forward. So let's go ahead and look at one. Um, the user request is RxMD on the OTC. So first and foremost, I've got the chart up here. And uh, it, it's, it's looking pretty bad. I mean, what we have here is, is a, a double top on what must have been a, a huge catalyst. I remember it at the start of the year. An incredible amount of volume. And then um, since then, really no demand for the stock at all. Um, why can't it move now? Well, the answer is pretty simple. Um, it, it, it's dilution. So if you look at this share structure, um, you know, traders only trade on the float. And to turn over this float, remember, if I could click something, I'll click it. Oh, there we go. Um, the outstanding shares subtracted by the restricted shares equal your public float. And... On RxMD, the public float is 350,121,394. At a price of 0.06, it would take $21 million worth of volume to turn it over. Unfortunately, RxMD uh, last or yesterday only did 58,000. $58,000 of volume that went into the stock. Um, so, so given this, um, I, I don't see a lot of opportunity for, for a really nice move on RxMD pending a massive, massive announcement. The reason for this is in the balance sheet. And if you look at RxMD's balance sheet, yes, they've got a lot of sales, but it costs them $4.3 million to sell it. When you're adding in SG&A and other types of compensation, RxMD is actually losing a half a million dollars a quarter. At that rate of loss, given this rate of volume, 58,000 per day, unfortunately, it looks as if RxMD um, will be a very long wait. And based on this chart, um, it's, it's lower high, it's lower highs and lower lows pretty much all the way through. Um, I would recommend uh, I would not touch RxMD, personally. Part of what runs the OTC is the, re is the new stuff, the reverse mergers. So in the filings over the weekend, um, a document came through for UPDC, and they had an 8K come out. That explains that the old company, UPD Holding, has actually sold the ticker to a new organization called Record Street Brewing. And this is in fact a reverse merger, which means that new, a new company is coming into that ticker. If we look at the chart, UPDC, the volume is pretty spotty, but overall it's on an upward trend. And then if we look at the share structure on UPDC, We don't exactly have a float listed, but we can see that at this price and on this share structure, it is much, much smaller than RxMD or something like that. And that period of time, 
between when the reverse merger company comes in and the old company leaves that period of time until they get completely live with their operations and reporting is a non-dilutive time which would mean that if there is enough interest in record street brewing next week i would expect a very large move on updc um, if you're interested in the course it's actually trading for all exchanges i've been successful trading on all exchanges and i choose to trade the otc because um, the opportunities can be absolutely massive but you need to know where to look and you need to trust yourself which is what my step system's all about so i'm hopeful some of you will take the opportunity I've got videos, tools. I've even got a custom indicator that you can use anywhere on any exchange. I'd love to have you on board. And that's all I got. All right. Well, that's great. Thank you so much, Patrick, for that information. So those of you that never heard Patrick, seen Patrick, you got to hear him tonight. So hopefully if you have any questions, please let me know and message me. So on that note, this is a wrap for our um I love stocks Sunday report and uh, we hope to see you all in chat room and uh, if you're not in it you're welcome to come by for two weeks free if you decide to join us after it's, you're welcome to do that At the end of the day we just want to help people the trading community and see everyone be a successful trader all right so the, ticker, the stocks we talked about was AEZS here Ruby RUBI RGSE, NE, RXMD, and UPDC on the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim, November the 18th, 2018. And we just want to let you know we love stocks. And, and we love our followers and viewers. And have yes, a good sir. night. And let's have a great week next week. We'll